Hello everyone, Wes Boss here. I am super excited to teach you Redux. Now, before we get started, I wanna show you first what we're actually gonna be making and second, what tooling you need in place before we get going. Now, this is the application, it's called Reduxtagram and as you may have noticed, it looks very similar to Instagram and it's got everything that you might expect from it. You got photos, you've got your captions, you've got your hearts, the ability to like it, you have the ability to go through to your comments. You can add a comment and it'll add it. You can go ahead and delete them. Everything that you would expect. Now this is totally built on React, React Router, and all of the data that we have in here and all of the actions when I'm liking it and adding a comment and deleting, those are all part of our Redux store. So, uh, Pretty cool app, get used to uh, seeing some photos of cute pups and pancakes because uh, you're gonna be looking at it for a while. Um, what do you need before you get started? Well, first of all, you need to know React. Uh, this is assumes that you have pretty good knowledge of React and, and how to use it, as well as pretty good knowledge of ES6. So if you are a little bit shaky in either of those areas, um, definitely recommend that you brush up on React first. Um, I obviously have a course, it's called React for Beginners, and uh, this is sort of uh, a continuation of this course where we're not building the same application, but uh, it's for anyone who has taken the React fundamentals and, and just nailed uh, how React works, and then you're able to, to move on and say, what's next, Wes? What should I be learning next? So check out React for Beginners if you are looking for a prerequisite to this course. Um, what else do we need? We need the React dev tools. Um, this is going to help us debug and look at state and props and, and all that good stuff. So go ahead and install that to your browser. Uh, and then we also need the Redux dev tools. And this is this is really cool. It's gonna allow us to uh, replay different things and be able to toggle off and on actions and really just time travel through our application to uh, to go through it. Um, at the time of recording, Redux dev tools is only available for Chrome as an extension. There is a way to get it up and running uh, with a Firefox or another browser, but uh, the way I'm using it in this course is assumes a Chrome extension. And then finally, you need Node.js. And if you've been doing any sort of React uh, so far, you need to make sure that you have that installed. Um, make sure that you have at least version 5 point something installed. Um, sometimes you'll get errors when you're trying to run uh, some of this tool here, and often it's because you aren't upgraded to uh, latest version of Node. So with that, let's get started, we need to go ahead and uh, install all of our dependencies. So what you need to do to get started is take the starter files that you'll find up on GitHub and take the first directory and rename it to learn-redux or whatever the folder that you're going to be working from. And this is going to be your home base for the whole tutorial. Now, if you uh, get lost anywhere along the stages, you can always restore. Uh, I'm going to give you the files at every single video. Um, but this is going to be your home base for where you want to work. Now, there's a package.json file in there. We can go ahead and type npm install, and that's going to go ahead and fetch all of the dependencies that we need in order to get everything up and running. While that installs, I'll tell you a little bit about the tooling that we're using here. Um, so we are using uh, ES6 modules, and in order to uh, bundle those all into a uh, a single JavaScript file, we are using Webpack. Now, uh, I'm not going to go too much into uh, how Webpack works because that's uh, an entire video series on its own. Um, but essentially, if we open up our package.json file, you'll see that there is a uh, npm start. And what that will do is it runs this thing called devserver.js. And that, in turn, is going to go ahead and compile all of our JavaScript. It's going to start up a little express server for us, and uh, we're going to be able to see something like this. It's going to give us localhost 7770, um, and that will allow us to see what we're building in real time. Uh, when you deploy it, there are other ones for uh, npm build, and that's going to go ahead and build you a static file that you can then put up on your server. But in order for us to have uh, hot reloading and live reloading and all that good stuff where we make our edits on the left here and we're going to immediately save them as see them as soon as we click save, uh, we're going to be using this. So all of that to say, don't worry too, too much about what's going on in here. Um, but how do we start it up? We go to our terminal once everything has gone ahead and installed for us. And you simply just type npm start. And that's going to go ahead and run it up. It's going to compile our bundle with Webpack there. And then most importantly is that it's going to tell us that it's available at localhost colon 7770. And a little trick, if you're using iTerm or anything on the Mac, 
you can hold down your command key and just click that and that will immediately open it on up. When you open it up, you should see nothing. And that's because we actually have to write the code ourselves. So I'll see you in the next video.